Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, I think we're about ready to UV map the character. Um, there may be a couple of things that I haven't done yet in terms of the modeling, but um, I can pick those up kind of on the way. The first thing I want to do is make my life easier. <laughs> and one way to do that is to remove all the polygons that aren't going to be seen because um, we don't need to UV map things that just aren't going to be used. So for this character, all of these polygons underneath this mask tunic thing, I think I can just remove. And then I won't have to deal with attempting to UV map them. So to do that, I'll just select this part of the character and go to the front view. And let's go ahead and tab into edit mode and go to faces. And I've got this little limit selection turned off at the moment here, but it also looks like I can use it with it turned on for a minute. We can see these polygons through the mesh. So I'm just going to press the C key for the circle select tool and just begin selecting some faces around in here and see what we can come up with. I've got quite a bit of overlap here, so I'm just going to use the middle mouse button with the circle select tool to just deselect a lot of these here. And it looks like I've got a few to deselect up here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete these and see how I did. Looks like I've got some points that I could pull back into the mask here. All right, so now it's kind of ugly, <laughs> it's true, but it makes my life oh so much easier as I try and UV map this. So to begin with, I'll go to this piece here, and this piece is single-sided. We've just extruded edges in to give it the illusion of thickness. UV mapping something without thickness is a whole lot easier than if it's double-sided. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here to Blender's UV editing screen layout. Let's give this a try. I'm going to frame that up and tab into edit mode. I'm going to turn off that ghosting here with that limit selection. And I think before I try and UV map this, I'm going to go ahead and apply the mirror modifier. I'll bring a new window out from here and change this to the properties panel. If we come over here to the modifiers, we can apply the mirror modifier. So I'll apply that. And now if I select everything here and press the U key and unwrap, you can see what we get. Um, it's not great, um, but the front and the back look actually not too bad. It's this top cowl mask here that isn't doing too well. But to really be sure, what we can do is bring down a new window here. And let's change this to a node editor. And let's create a new material so we can test our UV mapping. I'll go ahead and click New here. And let's create a new checker pattern by coming down to the UV image editor and clicking on New. And I'll call this a uh, test pattern. And instead of a blank image, let's go ahead and choose a UV grid, which is just a black and white checker pattern. And I'll just click OK. And there is our checker pattern. Now what we can do is press Shift A up here in the node editor. Go to texture and image texture. I'll connect the color up to the diffuse shader. And we'll just pull down this menu here and choose our test pattern there. Now, if we come over here to the viewport shading and click on texture, we should be able to see our texture on our object. And you can see how the front and the back isn't too bad. But once we get up here into, into the mask, it's all smeared out all over the top here. So we're going to have to do something with this. What we can try is to create a seam around the mask and then split it down the back. 
that will make our seams pretty visible, but there's not too many other ways to do it. We could split it straight down the back all the way up to the forehead here and give that a try, but then we'd have a seam all the way up the back as well. So we may not know exactly how it's going to be until we try it, so let's give it a shot. I think what I'll do is break it off around right here. So I'll alt click that edge and press control E and mark a seam there. And now that we have that seam there, let's go ahead and just test this. So I'll select everything again and hit U and unwrap. And so it breaks the mask out from the rest of the object and that's, that's okay, but it didn't really help us any. Let's now take this edge right here. So I'm going to select this point and I'll maybe control click a point right up here at the top of the forehead to select the edges between those two points. And let's go ahead and mark a seam there. And now let's give this another try. A U and unwrap. A little bit better. We can see that the checker pattern's a little bit better here on the back, but it's still pretty stretched up here in the front. All right, well, let's try splitting it here. Let's select this point and control click this point and mark a seam here with control E, mark seam. Let's press U and unwrap. A little bit, still not there yet. Let's now try selecting a point from here over to here and mark a seam there. And let's try this, U and unwrap. That helps a little bit more. Now, honestly, the texture of the mask is pretty much all one color, is pretty much all green. Um, so the stretching here may not matter that much. However, if we wanted to try and get it a little bit better, we could come over to the UV image editor here, and I'm going to scroll over and choose UV island selection, and I'll just click on this part, which is the mask, and I'm going to move it to the side here. I'll just hit G and move it out, and... I'll rotate it, and what we can do is we can pin certain vertices here, or UVs, within the UV image editor, and then use the Live Unwrap tool to try and alleviate some of the stretching here at the front of the face. So let's give this a try. I'm going to select um, points here. I'll switch to vertex mode and just select a couple of points along the outside of the UV island. And then if you come down here to the UVs menu, you can see you've got a menu item called pen and the shortcut for that is P. So I'll just press the P key and those points now turn red. Now if I switch to live unwrap like this, turn that on there. Now if I choose one of these points and hit G and move it around, you can see how I'm moving the point and the rest of the island is automatically re-unwrapping as I do that. So what we can do is try and adjust this so that we get a better unwrap here at the front of the face. So maybe I can take these two points right up here and scale them in the X. See if that helps a little. Maybe move them up a bit or down. I don't want to get too much of an overlap there. I can try these over here. Maybe scale these in the X and see how that works. That helps a little bit. So it's just a matter of kind of trial and error, seeing what you can get. Um, and the goal here is to try and get all of the checker pattern relatively the same size. There we go. So now we're beginning to get these squares here on the front a little bit closer to the rest of the squares on the back. Now you can see that seam here 
And what I'm hoping is that the general uniformity of the color will help hide those seams. But also I just wanted to show you the ability to adjust your UVs using that live unwrap tool. All right, so in the next video, we'll work on the UVs for other parts of the character. Let me just switch over to the texture viewport shading here, and we can see and we can see the checker pattern on the character. Our goal is to go through and get this test pattern on the whole character. Once we make sure our UV mapping isn't being stretched by using this test pattern, then we know when we apply our textures, they too won't be stretched. So in the next video, we'll work on UV mapping the face and maybe the rest of the torso. I'll see you then. Blender fans assemble. It's time to create Captain America's motorcycle using hard surface modeling techniques in Blender. In this online course, you'll learn the tools and processes of modeling a complex, realistic vehicle. We'll use reference images taken of the motorcycle from the first Captain America movie on display at the Harley Davidson Museum. We'll build the bike up from the frame, assembling each piece using different blender tools along the way. And we'll even go over setting up materials and lighting for a final render. This course is available at blender101.com, where you'll also get my Blender Scene Creation course, the course that takes you through the entire process of creating an animated scene in Blender from the first polygon to the final rendered movie. And if you're just starting out with Blender, you'll also get the course Blender 101 Introduction to 3D Modeling, an in-depth course that covers the fundamentals of modeling in Blender. And at Blender101.com, you get new courses and projects every month. So join me as we create Captain America's motorcycle at Blender101.com. It's Blender for everyone.